At least 98 people died when an overloaded boat capsized and sank off the coast of Mozambique late Sunday, state-run Radio Mozambique reports, citing local officials. Charles Manguero reports from Maputo, Mozambique. The administrator of Mozambique's northern province of Nampula, Silveiro Nawaito, is quoted by state-run Radio Mozambique on Monday as saying those aboard the boat Largely women and children were traveling from the northern Lunga district to a small island off the coast known as Mozambique Island. He says the 130 passengers were allegedly fleeing due to disinformation about a cholera outbreak and were headed to the island in search of health care. Nawaito said rescue teams have found 12 survivors and were searching for more, but poor weather conditions at sea were making the operation more difficult. He says burials for the victims are underway. He says we know that for now on the island and in districts here on the mainland, there are around 40 bodies that have arrived. A reporter asks, so funerals have already started to be held, for example, on the island? Yes, he says, they are already in the cemetery. According to Silveiro Nawaito, 91 of the bodies were found on Sunday and six others early on Monday. Since January, Mozambique has been battling to contain a deadly cholera outbreak in its northern regions, a health crisis that has also affected neighboring countries such as Malawi and Zambia. The Secretary of State in Nampula province, Jaime Neto, told VOA in a telephone interview that the boat could have been hit by a giant wave, but it was also overcrowded and not suitable to carry passengers. He says it was all due to misinformation about the cholera, but people were just escaping the cholera and ran to this boat, and there were a lot of children. So there was overcrowding in this boat, and also because it was not prepared to take passengers. It ended up sinking and creating this situation that the province regrets. Boat travel is a major means of transport in Mozambique, which has a dilapidated road network. Accidents, unfortunately, are common on the country's rivers, lakes, and Indian Ocean's coast, mostly due to poorly maintained boats or overcrowding. Charles Manguiro for VOA News, Maputo, Mozambique. Nigeria's former central bank governor Godwin Emefile on Monday pleaded not guilty to fresh charges brought against him by the country's anti-corruption body, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, or EFCC. The anti-graft agency last week filed dozens of charges accusing Emefile of corrupt practices and misuse of authority while serving in office. Nigerian President Bola Tinubu launched a, people, a probe on the central bank last year after taking office. Timothy Obiezu reports from Abuja. The former central bank governor, Godwin Emefili, appeared before the Lagos State High Court on Monday along with his co-defendant, Henry Omoile, facing 26 charges leveled against them by the Nigerian Anti-Graft Agency. In the latest suit filed on April 3rd, the EFCC said Emefiele violated Nigeria's Corrupt Practices Act by receiving bribes and gifts and acquiring property through fraud. The EFCC also accused Emefiele of arbitrarily allocating some $2 billion in foreign exchange without bids or due process and conferring undue advantage to his associates. Emefiele and Omoile both pleaded not guilty to the charges, but the court remanded Emefiele in custody until Thursday when a verdict on his bail application is expected. Emefiele's legal counsel was not immediately available to comment on the new charges, but public affairs analyst Chris Kwaja says. On the strength of the allegations, if he is found wanting, uh, then he will face uh, justice as required by uh, the laws uh, of the land. For every individual that has been given the mandate to occupy public office, that mandate is a product of trust. This case uh, represents uh, that. Uh, the, the, the only thing for me uh, is that in pursuit of accountability, uh, the Nigerian states must also be conscious uh, of uh, the rights of every individual. 
Emefile was appointed CBN governor by former President Goodluck Jonathan in 2014 and served until last year. He was arrested in June, days after President Bola Tinubu took office. Last year, the former Central Bank governor faced charges in another court in the capital, Abuja, for illegally awarding contracts and violating Nigeria's procurement laws, charges which he denied. Founder of the Center for Social Justice, Ezo Nyebere, wonders if the government is looking for a scapegoat. I'm getting a bit worried because we've seen this happen before in previous administrations. But let it not appear to be looking for a fall guy, somebody that could easily be shaken up and trying to uh, provide excuses for the inability to manage the economy very well. It's beginning to look a little bit not based on empirical legal evidence. Emefile withdrew from a possible presidential bid in 2022. Last July, Tinubu hired a special investigator to scrutinize the operations of the central bank under Emefile. On Friday, the investigator said his work was complete, but his report has not been released. Timothy Obiezu, VOA News, Abuja, Nigeria. 51 passengers were rescued after the bus they were traveling in was swept away by flood waters on a river bridge in northern Kenya, authorities said on Tuesday. The bus is still stuck in the river some 30 meters away from the bridge, although the waters are continuing to subside. Tana River County Commander Ali Njema told Associated Place. Njema said the road has now been closed indefinitely. He said anyone found violating the order will be arrested and charged. He said all passengers are accounted for. Police are looking for the driver of the bus who ignored passengers' concerns and insisted on driving through the water. Police said some of the passengers managed to escape just before the bus was submerged, while others climbed onto the roof. The incident happened just hours after Kenya's roads agency announced the closure of another section of the same road that was flooded after the Tana River swelled due to continuing heavy rains. The government had on Monday issued a flood alert to residents of Tana River and Rumu counties after a dam upstream was bleached by flooding. 